homeschool room. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you all the little details, nuances, things that I've added to kind of give my personal touch to it as a homeschool mom of four kids. Now we are very, very fortunate that we have a whole room dedicated to just homeschooling. And I know not everybody does, but you can still watch this video and glean from some ideas. I'll give you some pointers as I go along if you have a smaller space because we've been there, done that. But also, there is a playlist down below. This is a collaboration hosted by Anna with Just Making It Work, and she put this together, and I know for a fact that she, as well as many others, do not have a full room dedicated to homeschooling. So check out that playlist down below if you want some ideas. Now, my name is Leilani. I am a former public and private school teacher. I have four kids. One has Down syndrome, sensory processing disorder, ADHD, and so we have made this room actually very, very special needs friendly. And I've done a couple of school rooms in my day. It's a lot of work. But when I got to this room, I could really make this my own. So let me get started with the east side wall. There is a long table that just covers the whole wall, which all three, actually four of my kids, but mostly the three older ones will sit there and do their schoolwork, whether it's math, science, whatever. There's also a computer table at the very, very end that they use when they're doing their teaching textbooks, when they're typing out a paper. We actually had to put a platform on the bottom, which is kind of like just an old, it, it, there's no meaning behind it. It's, just, it's old cabinets from when we, we pulled out the cabinets and put granite and my husband saved it and it works as a platform so the kid can reach the keyboard. Having a computer downstairs with the kids has been absolutely awesome. We are probably gonna be getting another one for my other son to work on, probably his own laptop, a hand-me-down, whatever. We're just gonna create space for that as well. Probably a laptop, we'll just be honest. Laptop, laptops are like God's gift to the world. Well, no, iPads, iPads with a little keyboard that you can put with it are really good too. Next to the computer screen, we have a basket. All right, so I don't like jumping on the trendy bus, I'll just be honest, and I am not a fan of morning baskets, um, because, not just because the trendy bus, but it doesn't work for us. I mean, just be honest, it doesn't work for us because our morning basket is waking up, having breakfast, and taking my daughter to therapy. That's our morning basket. But this basket, because it's kind of turned into the miscellaneous wannabe, morning basket. It's got all of our library books in it or whatever the kids throw in there because they want mom to put it away basket. It's turning into you better get your high knees back in there and put away the stuff that you just shoved in the basket basket. Next to it, okay my, my son is working on the Mindstorms, not Minecraft, Mindstorms. It's a Lego robotics thing. He gets it out, plays with it, never finishes it, puts it back. He, He's still, he's tinkering with it. And we have this cool little cabinet in the middle that just kind of holds things up. The kids each have a drawer. The top, of course, is construction paper because I use construction paper like water. I just don't drink it. The bottom, we put all of our Bibles in. I do feel like having some kind of drawers to put stuff into is necessary. Whatever space you have, whether you hide it, have it in a closet, you just, you need that. I've seen some people color code them per child or per subject, which is great. And you can get those little rolly cards at Walmart, super easy, or Target, they have them there too. But you, you do need some kind of thing to file your paperwork in. Now we were able to get these beautiful cabinets from Ikea that we have actually above the kids. It's uh, They can put all their schoolwork in there. I have them divided with the folders by subject. And I also have Naomi's sensory processing stuff like her Play-Doh and the kinetic sand. and. Things that if she pulls out herself, she's gonna make a giganto mess. Scissors are up there, glue is up there, the hot glue is up there, crafts are up there that could get messy. Pretty much anything that I don't want Naomi touching is up there. And also anything that is really precious to the kids is up there in those cabinets. I did put all of the paints and all of the stuff that kind of scares me when it comes to mess, like way up at the top. My kids are really into art, so. They're way, way up at the top. Now on the wall behind the table, I like to put little like things. We use IW. IW is really big on making sure you have stuff on the wall for the kids to look at as they're working. I have a scripture copy work and the prepositions and helping verbs and some symbols and abbreviations that they use in IW. That's it right now. Things come and go through the year. It kind of rotates out. I also wanted to talk about these amazing lights under cabinet lighting that my husband put in. 
You know why? I don't think I need to add anything else to the fact that kids always need light when they're reading and doing work, so there they are. On the north wall, that's kind of the entrance to the room. I have a hook for all of their book bags because they do go to co-op, and I also have a bag specifically for when we travel and have to go to therapy and I have to, you know, take their work with us, which happens a lot. And of course, whenever I have a chance to put any of their artwork on the wall, I do that. On the opposite wall, which is actually this wall right here on the south wall, you know, I have a giganto bulletin board, which I love, love, love this thing. And the reason I like it, a couple things, is instead of using like a planner for the kids, I will actually write all of their schoolwork up on the board the night before. That's right, up on the board the night before, which is actually fairly easy to do because it's kind of fresh in my mind and I know where they left off and they'll check when they're finished and then I'll check to make sure it's done. Now, if you don't have a wall space for a big board, you can always use one of the smaller ones. If it's magnetic, that's like bonus points, especially if you use All About Spelling or All About Reading. Yes, they have an app that you can use on the iPad, but if you wanna go old school, you can get those little magnetic tiles, plus just magnets are cool. We also have timelines up there, some more artwork. Hannah has her calendar that we work on. She loves that thing. Well, no, actually, I love that thing. She loves it because she has to, or it'll break my heart since I work so hard to make it. And then there is Naomi's shelf. This is her education shelf. She is my daughter that does have Down syndrome, and this is all the stuff that whenever she wants to play with, she can get out. Now, I know a lot of people are really into those toddler bins. She's not a toddler anymore, she's a big girl. And I've seen people take, like for example, these guys. Some people don't wanna have a big bag like this out, ready for your child to grab because it ends up all over the floor. They will take the little pieces, like a handful of these, and stick in little like pocket, I don't know, they're like little baggies, bins, like those toddler bin things with the baggies inside, and they pull one out, and they can play with that and put it back. And You've seen those, those YouTube videos, right? Well, anyway, we have the whole bag, and I just lay this whole bag out. Why, okay? I don't mind having all the pieces on the floor. One, we, we do have a large space. We don't have a couch that they're gonna get shoved under if they keep it in the classroom. She also likes to put them on the whiteboard because it's magnetic, but I feel like she has more options to build, which leads to more opportunities for creativity. And her sisters and her brother, they can get involved with it building. Maybe they have something building that inspires her, vice versa. So yeah, that's why I have this big old thing right here next to the puzzles. And we have a lot of puzzles. Puzzles, puzzles, I mean, I pretty much have a video on every single thing that's on the shelf, to be honest. I am probably gonna retire these puzzles. I think she's beyond this. I think she's beyond this. I'm saying it over and over again and I'm, I'm convincing myself she's probably beyond this. However, I'm probably gonna check with her occupational therapy and ask her, because I do need more room. If not, I can always put it in storage, which, I'm gonna talk about storage in a second. But before I talk about storage, I wanna talk about my favorite thing in this entire room, which is everybody's favorite thing. Well, besides the whiteboard, the whiteboard's awesome. My favorite thing, my second, second favorite thing in the room. And that would be our therapy swing, which actually holds my weight. I don't weigh that much though, so that's not saying much. But this is their therapy swing. We use this with Naomi, we use this with the boys. We have them do schoolwork on their stomachs, like handwriting on their stomachs in this thing on the floor. We have them read books. I've had my son literally curl up, curl up in this thing and read a book. It's awesome. And it's, and you can spin yourself. <laughs> you can't see it, but the wall is really dirty behind me. We got some really good paint so I can clean it quite often, but feet get on this wall quite often. But it's okay because it's expected and I have a way of cleaning. Actually, I get them to clean it. It's not that bad right now. But this thing is awesome. And I have a video about it too. When talking about space or small space or just really any kind of space, you do want to have a nice efficient closet to kind of store some of your stuff that's out of the way that people can't see. And we took this wonderful closet space and put shelves in it. Everybody gets that, you know that you know what I'm talking about, right? Those houses 
and maybe it's just Florida, I don't know. But you get these closets that go under the stairs and they're very oddly shaped and you don't know what to put in there except, except like a ton of boxes just stacked to the roof. Well, we actually put some shelves in here so I can put all of my school supplies. And after teaching for over 10 years, as well as tutoring and teaching at co-ops and homeschooling, I've accumulated a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff that I don't want to get rid of, that I, that I use still to this day. And if I'm not using them, they're going to be used in the future. I just don't want to spend that money again. You know what I mean? So I have a lot of stuff in here that is just organized by subject, by grade, and I can find it. I don't have to go digging through different boxes. And I do have like, you know, you know, everybody has a Christmas box. We've got the holiday boxes in here as well as you know the picture boxes because you gotta have the pictures from when you were a kid that you can pull out usually people store that in their attic or their garage but I want to keep them in an air-conditioned area because they're old and we put them all the way back under the stairs that they just kind of sit there but besides that I mean this room is pretty much all my stuff all, all the homeschool stuff that I have but that basically sums up what we have. I'll stick some links down below of some items that we have that are kind of like my favorite things. My favorite items, so to speak. So you can check those out if you're interested. Don't forget to check out the playlist. Now if you're new here, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and follow us along on our journey. I am a mom, a former public private school teacher with four wonderful kids. The youngest has Down syndrome and this is our journey and we, I do. I invite you guys to come along with us. Leave us a comment down below so we can glean from each other, learn from each other. This is really, I mean, when you get down to it, we're talking about homeschooling, but also homeschooling with children with special needs. But right now, I, if you're more interested in our videos, I'm gonna stick some of my favorite videos that I think you guys will like, especially if you stay till the end of this video. They're gonna be around my face, as well as my face that you can click on to subscribe to the channel. And um, I will see you in our next video.